Hi, this is Amy from the Alti Store. We're continuing our series of the basics of solar electric systems. So if you have missed any of it, I suggest going up and watching the playlist from the beginning. We go over electricity basics, solar basics, and um, just a lot of the, the groundwork so that you can just follow along. So uh, now we're going to be talking about charging deep cycle batteries. And there's a little bit of math involved in here just because we wanted to really make sure you understand the, the difference in um, lots of the different technologies here. So we're going to start out talking how a deep cycle battery is different from a car battery. And we're going to talk about the capacity of batteries, their condition, and their charging stages, as well as a charging rate. And we're going to talk quite a bit about charging rate because it's pretty important, yet seems to be a bit overlooked. So a car battery is very, very different from a deep cycle battery. A car battery is designed to be, use a really heavy current to start your car, and then a heavy current from the alternator to recharge that really as fast as you possibly can. So it's designed for quick bursts of energy, but not an extended use. And it also does not want to be drawn down much. So it wants you to just use, a, use a, a quick burst, start the car, and then be done with it. So a deep cycle battery is specifically designed for smaller current loads, both charging and discharging, as well as using a lot more of the stored energy in the battery. So it's comparatively slow recharge throughout the day compared to a car battery. And it's really designed to do that every day, daily cycles. So sometimes you'll hear people saying, oh, I'm just gonna use a car battery in my solar system. Well, if you do that, you're going to end up with a, a dead battery in probably less than a year because it's just not designed to do that. So you really want to make sure you get a deep cycle battery for a solar system. So the first term that we're going to discuss is the battery capacity. That is how big a battery is. Now, a deep cycle battery is rated in both the volts, how many volts are, are in that battery, as well as amp hours. So volts times amp hours equals watt hours, and that's Ohm's law. So a lot of times with uh, lead acid batteries, you're gonna hear them talked about uh, the amp hour capacity. And for some reason, um, the lithium batteries tend to talk more about watt hours. So you see the bigger picture of the volts times the amp hours. But you need to know the, the voltage potential of the battery so that you know um, how many batteries you need to have in series or parallel in order to, um, to make the, the right size battery bank. So uh, we we'll talk about battery condition, the state of charge and depth of discharge. The two of them are opposite from each other. The state of charge is how full the battery is. So if a battery is three quarters full, you've got a 75% state of charge. But that same battery that's three quarters full, it's 25% depth of discharge. So you've used 25% of it. That's 25% depth of discharge. Now depth of discharge is a very important term to know when you're designing a system because the deeper you discharge a battery, the shorter your battery life is. So when you are designing this system, you really want to be aware. So if you take a look at this chart over here, if we only do a daily cycle of say 10% depth of discharge, so leave 90% of the, the battery energy in it, you're gonna be able to get 3,200 cycles. So basically be able to, to use that battery draw down 10% and charge it back up 3,200 times. Now, if you do something the same and you say, oh, well, I'm gonna use 75% of it with a lead acid battery, 
you're only going to get 250 cycles. So that's less than a year. Now, a lot of times you'll hear people say with a lead acid battery, oh, you only want to use up to 50% depth of discharge. That's after multiple days. So that is worst case, no sun for a couple of days. You use maybe 25% one day, another 25% the next day, then the sun comes out. You don't want to design the system to every day use 50% because you'll see you're only going to get 500 cycles out of it. So that's less than two years as opposed to, again, if you're just using it lightly, you're going to get 3,200 cycles. The downside with doing too light of a depth of discharge is you're going to need a bigger battery bank. Now notice I'm using this lead acid um, example. So lead acid is very, very different from the lithium batteries that we're going to get into. So a lot of the generalizations that we used to use and a lot of the rules of thumbs, those have gone away with lithium batteries. Now, if we compare the depth of discharge with the lead acid batteries and the lithium batteries, take a look at this difference. With lithium, you can go really, really deep depth of discharge. Some will say even use 100% of the stored energy and still have a high life cycle. So for this example, if you do 80% depth of discharge, so only use, only leave 20% of the um, energy left in that battery, you can have 5,000 cycles, doing that 5,000 times. Um, if you do 100%, you can do 2,000 cycles. So you're going to see where this comes into play later on when we're comparing lead acid batteries and lithium batteries. So another term we want to talk about is charging stages. Now again, this comes more into play with lead acid batteries than with lithium, but it's still very important to understand. So bulk is as it sounds. You do the bulk of the charging in bulk. So it's going to be the, um, the highest current. Your, your voltage is going to be a little on the lower side because the battery, the battery um, voltage is low. So you're going to throw as much current as you can at it. And you're going to do that until the battery is probably up around 80 or 90% charged. Then you're going to switch to absorption. So at, at absorption, you bring your voltage up. So you're really throwing a lot of voltage at the battery and you're going to find that the current um, that's being absorbed into the battery is going to start dropping. So as the battery gets full, it can only receive so much more energy. So it's, you're going to see the, the voltage go up as the battery gets full and the current go down. So then the next stage is float. Float, your voltage is going to drop back down. So you're going to kind of be right at that full battery voltage. And your current is going to be pretty much down to zero because that battery is full and you're just keeping it topped off. So you're just making sure that, that all of the energy is packed in there nice and tight and that that battery is nice and full. Now, if you have a flooded lead acid battery, you're going to talk about equalizing it. Maybe once a month, you're going to throw a really high voltage at it. That's going to shake off any, any sulfation that's formed on the, the plates. And it's going to make sure that each of the individual cells in the battery are, is fully charged and just really equalize, get, get the whole battery so that it's it's healthy and, and full. So again, you're only going to do that with flooded lead acid batteries, not with lithium or, or sealed batteries. Okay, so this is probably a good place for us to take a break. So we've gone through uh, these four different categories and we're going to break out the charge rate into its own 
video because this is starting to get a little bit long. So I'm going to have that video right on the end of this one. So just click on that and that'll just uh, start right up. So I hope this was helpful. If so, give us a like and a share. Be sure to uh, subscribe so that we can let you know of new videos. And don't forget to go to our website at altistore.com where we've been making renewable doable since 1999.